Well, welcome to St. David's Church. Nice to have you. Please, please be seated. The choir is going to uh, begin our time with a, uh, a transfiguration song, uh, Swiftly Past the Clouds of Glory. So that will be our intro today. Canada, and we turn to 7.7, which is a section on Holy Communion. Remind ourselves of what we uh, believe in uh, our tradition regarding uh, this important event, which we're taking today on Valentine's Day, which is a lovely combination. I'll say one paragraph, and then you the next, and we'll go right to, uh, to the end of the bottom of the page. In breaking bread and drinking wine, Jesus told us to remember him. In this action, called Holy Communion, Lord's Supper, or Eucharist, Christ offers himself to us and we present ourselves to him in worship and adoration. is a joyful mystery whereby Jesus takes the bread and wine to represent his atoning sacrifice, deepening our union with himself and with each other, giving us of his life and strength. Here Christ is present in his world, proclaiming salvation until he comes, a symbol of hope for a troubled age. to Christ, come gladly to his table to make a memorial of his life and death, to celebrate his presence, and together as his church, offer him thanks. Let's sing uh, together the communion hymn 538, You Satisfy the Hungry Heart, 538.
joyful lips we sing to you our prayers and gratitude that you should count us worthy friends to share this heavenly food. You satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. Is not the cup we bless and share the blood of Christ our Lord. Do not one cup, one love declare our oneness in the Lord. You satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. The mystery of your presence here, no mortal tongue can tell, whom all the world cannot contain, comes in our hearts to dwell. You satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. In gracious love you give yourself, then selfless let us be to serve each other in your name, in truth and charity. You satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. May be seated. Each time we come to our opening prayers uh, of approach and confession, the assurance of pardon, we'll do the Lord's Prayer later in the service. Each time we come to this, we come seeking to be open and honest and transparent before our God. And so that's why we're coming. And so I hope that you'll take this time as you're able to focus on what God has for you during this time of uh, just an hour or so that we have together. And so we look to you. Uh, we look to God together. And uh, with these things in mind, let us pray. And Lord, we come again to you, the Holy One. We come to your mercy and your grace. We come to a place where we hope to be safe enough to open our hearts and our minds to you that we would know you and you would know us, that we would enjoy this time together being encouraged as a result. Lord, as we look out into the vastness of creation, we continue to marvel at the things that are so small that we haven't seen and yet are engineered by your hand. Life in its smallness and how it's all interconnected and works. Lord, we marvel each time we learn something new of how creation works together to praise you. And similarly, into outer space, into the expanses of the universe, the galaxies, the sun, and the stars, and all the celestial bodies across the heavens. Lord, we marvel at the space that we see, and yet by your hand you made these. You are a truly great God, and we come to know you anew this day in your greatness and coming to us. And Lord, we recognize there is rebellion in our hearts. There are many uh, voices in our hearts and minds which want to come against what you're doing. And so, Lord, we come to confess our sins. Any attitudes, any actions, 
any inaction that's against your will and way, we confess them quietly now to the Lord. Forgive us, Lord, where we seek to live our lives so independently of others and of you. Forgive us, Lord, where we seek to be completely self-sufficient. Help us, O oh God, to be able to acknowledge our needs to you and to one another. We trust you, Lord, for what this means, and we ask you for the courage and the strength and the boldness to be able to be ourselves with all our faults and sins, and yet to know your grace and love and transformation in the midst of it. And so we thank you, O Lord, for the fact that in Jesus Christ we are forgiven, all who trust him as Lord and Savior, that through the cross and the resurrection we have all that we need to know full relationship with you today and forever. And so we thank you for all these things. Through Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. The anthem today is If We Truly Believe, a communion anthem.
Well, boys and girls, uh, your time to sing with us, 373, uh, one that I think we know, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so, 363. day, boys and girls, and uh, anybody want to tell me what special day this is? Valentine's. Valentine's. What do you do on Valentine's? You give Valentine's, yeah. But why do you do that? And make hearts, too. That's right. Go ahead. I'm not sure I can, get, I can repeat all that, um, but uh, Aiden was saying basically that um, there was a guy named Valentine, and uh, he got put in jail and was on, on the 14th of February. Um, no, he died in. He died in jail, or okay. So something somehow that history has something to do with loving each other. That's what I was looking for, right? Just kind of the the simple, simple for me kind of. Because that's what we really like, why you give cards, right? I hope. Uh, you know, is, is that you try to tell somebody else that you love them. Which is a tough thing to do sometimes, you think? Is it hard to say to your parents that you love them sometimes? Or, or to somebody at school that you love them? Anyway, uh, that's what Valentine's is about. And uh, we're doing communion today, and I'm dressed up in my robe today to, to remind us that uh, that's Jesus saying that he loves us. And that's his valentine to us, his life and his love. And uh, we do have communion, which is just a little bit of grape juice and a little bit of bread. Uh, not, you know, we have snacks every, every week at uh, coffee time, and we know you enjoy that, uh, uh, most of you. And uh, it's, it, it's not really just a snack. It's really about meeting with Jesus and saying that we love him and, that, and hearing again from him that he loves us in a special way. Uh, during that time, and that's that's what communion is. So uh, 
that's just what's going on today, and we hope that you will be able to tell people that you love them today, whether it be with a little card. Do you guys still buy those little cards with, like, cartoons and stuff on them? Valentine's? Do you, do, do you out there, anybody? No. Okay, thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, and uh, however you want to show it today, uh, whether it be in word or deed, then make sure that you uh, let people know you love them. Okay? So let's pray together and you go to your classes. You say the prayer after me. Dear God, thank you for loving me in Jesus. Help me to love him and to love others too. Through Christ we pray. Amen. There you go. And as many leave, we uh, invite Eleanor up when she's ready. And uh, she's going to help us with Exodus and Second Corinthians. The first reading is from Exodus 34, verses 29 to 35. When Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tablets of the covenant law in his hands, he was not aware that his face was radiant because he had spoken with the Lord. When Aaron and all the Israelites saw Moses, his face was radiant, and they were afraid to come near him. But Moses called to them, so Aaron and all the leaders of the community came back to him, and he spoke to them. Afterward, all the Israelites came near him, and he gave them all the commands the Lord had given him on Mount Sinai. When Moses finished speaking to them, he put a veil over his face. But whenever he entered the Lord's presence to speak with him, he removed the veil until he came out. And when he came out and told the Israelites what he had been commanded, they saw that his face was radiant. Then Moses would put the veil back over his face until he went in to speak with the Lord. The second reading is from 2 Corinthians 3.12 to 4.2. Therefore, since we have such a hope, we are very bold. We are not like Moses, who would put a veil over his face to prevent the Israelites from seeing the end of what was passing away. But their minds were made dull, for to this day the same veil remains when the old covenant is read. It has not been removed, because only in Christ is it taken away. Even to this day when Moses is read, a veil covers their head, their hearts. But whenever anyone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we all, who with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory, are being transformed into his image, with ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. Therefore, since through God's mercy we have this ministry, we do not lose heart. Rather, we have renounced secret and shameful ways. We do not use deception, nor do we distort the word of God. On the contrary... By setting forth the truth plainly, we commend ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of God. This is the word of the Lord. And turn with me, please, then, to Psalm 99, which is on page 897, and we'll read the psalm responsibly together. Psalm 99 on page 897. I'll read the first first and then you the next and so on. The Lord reigns. Let the nations tremble. He sits enthroned between the cherubim. Let the earth shake. Let them praise your great and awesome name. He is holy. He is 
exalt the Lord our God and worship at his footstool. He is holy. He spoke to them from the pillar of cloud. They kept his statutes and the decrees he gave them. Exalt the Lord our God and worship at his holy mountain, for the Lord our God is holy. And then the gospel reading on this Transfiguration Sunday, Luke chapter 9, verse 28 and following, page 1543 in the New Testament, 1543. About eight days after Jesus said this, he took Peter, John, and James with him, went up onto a mountain to pray, and as he was praying, the appearance of his face changed, and his clothes became as bright as a flash of lightning. Two men, Moses and Elijah, appeared in glorious splendor, talking with Jesus. They spoke about his departure, which he was about to bring to fulfill- fulfillment at Jerusalem. Peter and his companions were very sleepy, but when they became fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men standing with him. And as the men were leaving Jesus, Peter said to him, Master, it's good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what he was saying. And while he was speaking, a cloud appeared and covered them. And they were afraid as they entered the cloud. A voice came from the cloud saying, This is my son, whom I have chosen. Listen to him. And when the voice had spoken, they found that Jesus was alone. The disciples kept this to themselves and did not tell anyone at that time what they had seen. Amen. And thanks be to God for this is holy word. Let's sing together, shall we? For the bread which you have broken, 549 in the book of praise, 549. something fresh from your very throne room we ask you to help us to hear help us to listen help us to receive 
and to know all that you have for us, to know you and to see your love anew. Through Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. One of the most uh, studied themes uh, that I seem to be coming across over and over again these days is transformation. Why is that? I, I, I get into a situation I can't handle or manage, and I don't know what to do. I believe, I guess we all get stuck somehow, sometime. Maybe it's health. Maybe it's a job or career problem. Maybe it's a relationship problem or some unresolved conflict. Maybe it's someone else in the family who is experiencing this. So how do I get unstuck and be a helpful influence in the midst of a sticky situation? Or maybe it's even deeper than that. A secret addiction, a mental health problem, or possibly a deep fear or anxiety that won't go away. Where do I go with such a need? Those closest to me sometimes can't help me because they're so close to me and possibly a part of what is causing the difficulty in the first place. So where can I go? Do I go to a stranger upon the suggestion of someone I know and trust? Do, do I go to a professional counselor, psychologist, or psychiatrist? Where is my help in my community when I need it most? I've suggested before from here that small groups are one way to regularly take care of many of these kinds of needs and difficulties. The way of the small group is a method Jesus himself used. But what is the key component in that small group experience. And hold that thought. Here's where I break away from our regularly scheduled programming and then come to the Olympics. Much is made of the Olympics, a sporting event which seems to be one of the few positive, encouraging world venues for peaceful competition. Much is also made of the amount of time each individual athlete puts into their training. Much has also been made of the amount of money and resources being poured into making sure that Canadian athletes have the competitive edge, the best medicine, the best technology, the best psychology, the best overall training tools. Whole lives are being poured into these fairly specific winter sports. I suppose that's where we get the phrase that something has an Olympic quality or magnitude. It is the ultimate in long-term training for a two-minute long race or even just a few seconds of jumping or freestyle. Years and years of planning goes into these individual sports, and similarly, in the team sports, years of individuals' lives are devoted to these particular athletic challenges. The Olympics celebrates the far reaches of the human spirit and body to achieve more. Sometimes these sports push too far and end in tragic accidents or even deaths, such as with the young 21-year-old uh, Georgian man who lost his life on the luge track uh, during practice on Friday. There's a risk in pushing the envelope in sports, particularly where individuals are traveling at speeds exceeding highway speeds, except not having a car around you to protect you. The Olympics represent a model of years of practice, training, and expert coaching to get to the height of a particular sport and individual conditioning and requires the highest of commitment. In small groups, or at any other time when one tries to be vulnerable with someone else about one's needs or desires, we bring our whole lives to the table and focus for a moment on that one area of need. We bring ourselves to the group or to the individual, and as we seek to share ourselves with another human being, we wonder if that experience will be a wipeout or even a death or possibly a medal or a high placement if we share who we truly are. What will that person think of me if I re risk telling them about that part of my life? What we are looking for is a place and a venue for being loved. Small groups and professional individuals may not have the answers to the burning questions we have in our lives, but they can help us find a way to cope, to go on, to deal with what we are dealing with in a constructive way. So while we may never experience sport in the way Olympians do, we can experience an Olympian love. And what I mean by Olympian love is the kind of love we have in Jesus, the kind of love available to us in God and in God's people, the kind of love mentioned in 1 Corinthians 13 that's kind and patient, not keeping scores of wrongs, not boastful or proud, not easily angered, but trusting, hopeful, persevering. 
plan of God becoming a human being to save us from the situation of our being unable to rescue ourselves from sin and rebellion was centuries, perhaps millennia in the making, probably longer. Individual athletes only have their young lifetimes to train, but God had more time to consider such a great sacrificial love for each one of us. He gave us everything he could in coming to minister to us for a short while so long ago than to be with us by the Holy Spirit if we choose to trust him. So God's love, I suppose, is Olympic. We have at his table today the reminders of all that Jesus did to be able to care for us, each one of us, no matter what we are going through, no matter how difficult life is, no matter what challenge or issue faces us. Scriptures tell us of how Moses met with the Lord and how his face was physically changed as a result. It was glowing. In order to not scare or flaunt this new physical look, he wore a mask or a veil. Paul tells us that he put the mask on to hide the fact that the glow that came from the glory of the Lord was fading. He wasn't what he once was. All of us put on masks of various kinds. Some of us wear professional masks. Some of us wear intellectual masks. Some of us wear spiritual masks. We try to cover up something, sometimes consciously, but most times unconsciously. But the gospel calls us to just be who we are, with all our flaws and sins, to acknowledge all our difficulties and our rebellion. We need to do this because it is in this state of need that God indeed comes and transforms us. For if we don't need God, we tend to substitute our own choices for God, whether it be our, our, ourselves, our passions, our intellectual constructs, constructs all our own little g gods or idols. But if we do actually need God, then God surprises us with the power of weakness and the strength of vulnerability. This is how we are to come to the table of the Lord. All other ways tend to make our spirituality into a badge or some kind of add-on. Religion can be a recreational sport, but God calls us to consider our spiritual need a relationship with God is a core value. On this Valentine's Day, it's okay to admit how much we need to be loved, whether we're young or old, married or not, well-to-do or nothing to do, whether or whatever stage or season of life we consider ourselves to be in. This is the place. This is the time. Admit what we need, each one of us, and risk res receiving what you desire. This, I believe, is the transformational path. Three closest friends of Jesus went on a mountain hike with him. At one point in their time together, Jesus begins to shine and become brighter than they could ever imagine, even shinier than Moses was after meeting with God and receiving the Ten Commandments. Paul tells us that we are being changed into the image of Jesus as we gaze upon time, upon him. Sometimes we look at Jesus in Bible study, sometimes in prayer. But here at his table, he looks at us with his eyes of love. So this is a time to receive his look and his love. And as the voice of God himself says, this is my beloved son. Listen to him. On this Valentine's Day, let's draw close to the table of the Lord and to God himself to receive the love we need let us pray. And Lord, out of all our needs in life, we give you great thanks for the love that you show us in Jesus Christ. kindness and the patience, mercy and the care, the transparency and vulnerability, the truth, and the mercy of our God coming to each one of us. Lord, when we cannot buy it, cannot achieve it, cannot make it, we're given a gift. And Lord, every time we open a present 
whether it be at Christmas or at our birthday or on a Valentine's Day, every time we have a chocolate or uh, open a bow, help us to remember this greatest of all gifts, that we might know you and love you and grow forever in that love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Uh, just a few announcements before our uh, offering. Um, I wanted to make sure uh, that everyone knew how well we'd done on uh, Presbyterian sharing. We uh, really uh, went well above our $17,000 um, target to uh, um, tw- 23000 and and that, that's across the country helped a great deal in a, in a difficult year financially in many parts of the country. So uh, thank you very much for all those who gave uh, so well in this last year. We, re- we really appreciate it. You'll note that uh, our annual meeting's coming up in two weeks' time. We hope to have all the reports for you next, uh, next Sunday so you have a week to read them. We're doing it on a, on a luncheon setting uh, directly following uh, the service in, in two weeks' time, so we hope that you can uh, come and uh, be a part of that. Uh, if you haven't come for a long time, we hope for it to be a, an efficient uh, and positive meeting and uh, would love to have you come. Uh, there's, there are a huge number of announcements. Uh, we want to make sure that you know we do have a pancake supper on, on uh, Mardi Gras, Shrove Tuesday, coming up. That's just in two days' time, hard to believe. Uh, but uh, we would like you to know, and I guess there are tickets available, but please uh, call, talk to Lillian or I guess anyone who uh, would... Uh, Uh, report that so we can know how many to uh, cook for. That'd be real nice. Um, A a lot of other announcements here as well. Uh, There's condolences here. Uh, 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 John and uh, Catherine Whitehead are in Scotland over the passing of John's mom and our our, uh, thoughts and prayers are with him and also with uh, uh, Lynn's family with the passing of her aunt. Uh, We were there in the uh, funeral home quite a bit this last week. Session on, on uh, Tuesday after the supper, pancake supper, don't forget that please for, to the elders and I think that's plenty of announcements at this point. If there are any others, please uh, check the bulletin uh, for that. If the ushers would come forward, we give to God our gifts, tithes and ushering, uh, our gifts, tithes and our very selves at this time.
thank you again for coming to you and giving you back a portion of all that we have in life to say that we love you, that we want your ways and will to prosper here in this congregation and in this city across all that name you and across all the communities here, across Newfoundland and Labrador, across Canada and to the ends of the earth, may Jesus Christ be praised. Amen. You may be seated. Just before, um, I, I forgot during the announcements, uh, we have two lost little piggies. Hope this doesn't break the mood too much. Eh? Uh, we, uh, we don't know who they belong to. This is the way we uh, uh, raise a little bit of money for an admission group. So if these are your piggies or you know who they belong to, they're here making very little noise right here. So. Thank you. Let's begin our, our time with the Apostles' Creed. Turn with me to 539, the Book of Praise. Stand together and confess our faith as it's recorded here. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and a life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. This is the table of the Lord. Come not because you are strong, but because you are weak. Come not because any goodness of your own gives you a right to come, but because you need mercy and help. Come because you love the Lord a little and would like to love him more. Come because the Lord loves you and gave himself for you. Let this bread and this wine be for you the token and pledge of the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, all meant for you, if you will receive them in humble faith. O oh, taste and see that God is good. Let's sing to God's praise, I come with joy, a child of God, 530 in the book of praise.
seated. Uh, you might want to turn in your book to 564, where you'll find the uh, communion service that we follow. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Let us pray. Holy God, creator of heaven and earth, with joy we do give you thanks and praise. You commanded light to shine out of darkness, divided the sea and dry land, created the vast universe and called it good. You made us in your image to live with one another in love. You gave us the breath of life and freedom to choose your way. In commandments through Moses and calls for justice in the cry of the prophets, through long generations you have been patient and kind to all your children. How wonderful are your ways, Almighty God. How marvelous is your name, O Holy One. You alone are God. Therefore, with apostles and prophets and that great cloud of witnesses who live for you beyond all time and space, we lift our hearts in joyful praise, saying together, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise you, most holy God, for sending your only Son, Jesus, to live among us, full of grace and truth, sharing our joy and sorrow. He healed the sick and was a friend of sinners. Obeying you, he took up his cross and died that we might live. We praise you that he has overcome death and is risen to rule the world. He is still the friend of sinners. We trust him to overcome every power that can hurt or divide us and believe that when he comes in glory, we will celebrate victory with him. We thank you that on the night before he died, Jesus took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, and said, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood. Do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we take this bread and this cup, and give you praise and thanksgiving as we proclaim the mystery of faith together. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon this bread and wine, that we and all who share this feast may be one with Christ and he with us. Here we offer ourselves to be a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to you, for in your mercy... Accept our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Fill us with the joy of eternal life, that we may be your faithful people until we feast with you in glory, through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor are yours, Almighty God, forever and ever. And as our Lord taught us, we now pray using the wording here in the hymnal, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. On the night Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and after giving thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. the elements uh, until uh, we can all partake together. This 
so we just encourage you to do so and think on his love. Jesus has given us so much in himself and in his body, and so he makes us his body together, and so we take and eat. In the same way, after the supper, he takes a cup and says, This is the new covenant sealed in my blood. Do this for the remembrance of me. As often as you drink this cup, you proclaim my death and resurrection until I come. The blood of Christ is shed for you. Again, we hold the elements to partake together. As you consider the cup, consider what Jesus has done for you.
and what you are doing in giving yourself to him. Lord, as we come together around the cup, we remember all that you've done for us, but we also pause to reflect what we might do uh, for you in giving ourselves to you. So help us, Lord, to recommit all of ourselves to you as we drink together. The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Let us pray. Lord, there's so much going on in our lives and so much across the face of the earth this day. We thank you for communing together here in this place, and with all those across the face of the planet who are again knowing the love of the Lord. 
Help us, we pray, to experience such love in ways that we can understand on a daily basis. Help us as we seek to make that time in our lives and schedules for you. Be with those this day who especially need you in their grief. Be with those this day who especially need you in their uh, illness, in their uh, convalescence. Help each of us as we seek to be open and honest before you and one another, as we seek to grow in our faith and matures in the way mature in the ways that belong to you. Give wisdom to our leaders here in this congregation. Give wisdom to our officials in this city, across our province, and across our country, Lord. Help us, we pray, as we seek to know you in every aspect of life. Through Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Closing hymn is Where Cross the Crowded Ways of Life, 760, 760 in the Book of Praise. Thank you all.